This is the 26th of April of 2020. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless every hearer of your message, that your message and your words are wrote on the tablet of every hearer's heart. And Father, I ask you to go out to every person that's supposed to go out to. And Father, I ask for a hedge of protection around me as I'm studying and bringing this word out, and a hedge of protection around everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice. Father, Whew, I thank you, Father, and I ask that you give everyone a revelation experience, revelation knowledge, revelation wisdom, a view of who you are, Father. Give them such a resolve that they want to know more and more and more. Give them a hunger and a thirst to know more and more and more of you. Father, I ask you to keep this uh, this recording device working properly with no hiccups. I ask you also to do the same thing with the internet and to upload it fast with no interruptions. I ask you to keep it cool in here and quiet in here and quiet outside in Jesus' name. And now the, the title of this study is Because of Our Importance to God. Okay, uh, so first off, we're going to look at John chapter 15, verses 14 to 24. John chapter 15, verses 14 to 24. Ye are my friends, if ye do it, so ever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of me in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But, in, but because... Ye are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. But remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Okay, um, if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they would not have had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. There's no covering for the sin anymore. He that hateth me hateth my father also. I, uh, if I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not sinned, but now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. Oh, wow. See? That right there is powerful. Okay. So a value, and what he's saying is a value cannot be put on or placed on a child of God. Also, let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 29 to 31. Matthew 10, 29 to 31. Father, touch my eyes. Touch my speech. 10, okay, Matthew 10, 29 to 31. And see, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall to the on the ground without your father, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, uh, fear, not, fear ye not. Therefore, are ye of more value than many sparrows? Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. Thank you for telling us this. Okay, the the huge question now is, why 
are the children of God. And these people only want to be loved. They only want to show love and do good. And uh, why are they hated so much around the world? Okay. Why are they hated so strongly? Okay. So before we go any further, let's take a look at the true reason Satan hates believers. And this really will open your eyes. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26 to 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male and female created he them and god blessed them and god said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth you know what i find interesting i just realized this we are to have dominion over the air over the earth and everything on the earth. He never said any, and have dominion over anything under the earth or in the earth. Uh, I just, that just came to mind, which I will have to ask somebody else about that and look into that more. But I, anyhow, that's interesting right there. He's telling you um, that we are made in his image and he gave us dominion over the earth. Now you know why we're hated so much by Satan and by the, his fallen angels here. Wow, that really opens my eyes. Praise you, Jesus. So in reality, the the world expects everyone to be like it is, not living for a creator, but actually living with the mentality of, if it feels good, do it. You know, awful way to live. So because we love God in others, we love God, righteousness and hate sin we love the person but hate the sin we are persecuted and hated now you couple this with what we just read in genesis wow that gives you the whole picture i want to do a little bit more study in here just as in first john chapter 2 verse 15 says love nothing of the world and we'll look at that first john chapter 2 verse 15 and 16 first john Chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father but is of the world. And if you've noticed here where it says, love not the world, you see, because in the world is the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And all three of those areas that every human actually has to deal with is where Jesus was, was tormented at. He was uh, temp tempted. That's why we can say, and that's why the word says, he was tempted in all points as we. So we have a high priest that can, you know, that can understand what as humans go through. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you for that. Okay. In fact, let's look at some scriptures that tell us what and how, how to love and how to live. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Romans 12, 9. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cling to that which is good. Well, the word abhor is mean. It's just so disgusting. You stay away from it. And dissimulation, I looked that up. Exact. I wanted to give you the exact 
uh, meaning of it, okay? So what does dissimulation mean? Okay, the act of faking your true feelings. Dissimulation implies that the wool is being pulled over someone's eyes, okay? And then they're being fooled or tricked by someone's deceit. See, that's what that means. So it means to stay away, stay away from people that are tricking you. And even Jesus said, in fact, Paul said, at my departure, I know that grievous wolves are going to come in, not sparing the flock. See, this simulation, they're hiding their true intentions. They're hiding their true feelings. And then they're going to cause a lot of harm. Hallelujah. And in fact, in nowadays, you know, going up in modern times, you can see how much damage has been done. So, um... Let's look at uh, Psalms chapter 97, verse 10. Love God and hate evil. Psalms 97. I'm sorry. Psalms 97, verse 10. Psalms chapter 97, verse 10. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hands of the wicked. And what you want to understand there and catch out of that, if you love the Lord, hate evil. And no matter what you're being persecuted in, no matter what uh, these evil people are doing to you, and what lies they're bringing up about you, you will be saved out of it. As long as you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love Jesus, love Jesus and as Savior and love him for what he's done and for shedding his innocent blood for us on that tree, that horrible death. And, you know, and, and we will be saved. Hallelujah. And that's what Father God's asking us. So you see it. Love God, hate evil. Let's also look at Romans because we want to remember this. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 Romans chapter 3 verse 23 Romans chapter 3 verse 23 even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference. Hallelujah. 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 So what are we to believe? You know, or what are we to do as believers? What are we supposed to be doing as believers? Let's look at Matthew chapter 5 verses 11 to 16. Matthew 5. 11 to 16, Matthew 5, 11 to 16. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ooh. If ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his, his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, to be trodden under foot of men. Oh. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Let your light shine so men can see it. Don't don't try to act like you're something you're not, neither. So, um, the, the will of God is to love him and love his son, Jesus Christ. We've already read that. 
with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we're going to look at that. The scripture for it is Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. Matthew 22. Uh, Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus saith unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Here's what we want to do. He's telling you his, his will. The will of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's his will. Okay, so we are to continually seek, ask, knock, repent, teach others, pray for others, pray in our heavenly language, pray for you as president and our vice president, their families, Keep others in prayer. Keep praying in our heavenly language and such. Hallelujah. Keep letting your light shine. So just like Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 to 8 says. Matthew chapter 7 verses 7 to 8. I'm sure you know this one. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Hallelujah. Thank you for that promise. What a promise. What a promise. And if you look just one scripture uh, backwards, we're told to not give our... Uh, our treasures to people that hate us or to things that hate us or things of this world in other words because if you look at this if you go back up to five to to verse four is matthew chapter seven verse six give not that which is holy unto the dogs neither cast your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn and rent you. So you tell someone your secrets and yes, they're going to, uh, they're, they're going to use them against you, you know, as far as the world goes. And, um, wow. We're just continue to teach others. So here's what we're supposed to do. So in all reality, keep letting your light shine. The love of God, tell the good news and keep shining. Hallelujah. Keep it coming. And we're going to look at the um, what we're supposed to be doing. I mean, it's the Great Commission. We've all heard this one. It's Matthew chapter 28. Okay, Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And one other thing I'm going to say, if I can remember where it was at, Matthew um, 13, 53. Because the other day I was teaching on Matthew chapter 13, verses 1. 51 to 53 okay let me find it here and it's interesting that and i taught and it shows you here that we're actually scribes because scribe the word scribe is actually a uh a learned man and a scribe is also a secretary a clerk this sort of thing so a scribe and that's what Jesus likens us to. And that's our uh, another uh, title for his children. Um, as it says in, in Timothy 1.7. I don't remember if it was 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy. And I'll put it in the description. I'll find it put in the description. But it says, study to show yourself approved. So I'll, I'll find that and put that at the bottom here. Um, okay, Matthew 13. 
Um, it says here, 51 to 53, I'm going to read it for you. Jesus said unto them, have ye understood all things? So this is the tr chapter 13. Um, just to give you a little bit of insight, Jesus, for the most part, is speaking in parables. And then he asks the, uh, when he's with the uh, 12 disciples, he asks them uh, what they, you know, if they caught on, if they understood. And they said, yes. And I'm thinking now at this point, yeah, they understood to a certain degree, right? Um, so Jesus said to them, uh, have ye understood all things? And they said unto him, yea, Lord. And then he said unto them, therefore, every scribe, which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder and bringeth forth out of his treasury things new and old. Okay. So then it says here, and then 53 says, uh, he finished, and it came to pass that when he had finished these parables, then he, he departed thence. See, but uh, what, what you want to get out of that is where Jesus is instructing them. He's telling them that every scribe which is instructed. Now, mind you, he's talking to the believers. So he's telling the believers every scribe. So we know that a scribe is a learned man. A scribe is also a secretary or a clerk. Right? They're also someone in the hierarchy of the church or Catholicism, uh, 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 Christianity, in, in, in essence. They act, you know, they're a, they're a clergy, they're a clerk, they're the people that take down notes also. So keep that in mind. So Jesus is calling us scribes. Okay? And scribes are to also another, another job description of a scribe. Like in the old the Old Testament, and probably in the New Testament, and I don't remember which scripture in the New Testament, but the scriptures in the Old Testament where it describes a scribe for the king, and he was the one that was taking notes, and also he would go back and he would he would keep track of the um, of the the military enrollment and all the names in the military enrollment and go through them, and uh, and then also uh, this a scribe in this sense would read the word of God and explain it. So so what he is saying, all those descriptions come into modern times and we can use it in modern times and where and we can relate this back to Matthew chapter 13 verse 52. And also I did not know this but I also found out that this scripture here where he talks about uh, like a man like a householder this is considered a, by most people, most scholars, the parable of the householder. That he's telling us every person, every every believer is a scribe, and every see every believer is instructed in the kingdom of God. You know, the, the kingdom of heaven. So, because more we learn, that's why we're we're uh, told by Paul to renew our mind daily and keeping the word. And we're told to pray without ceasing, and we're told to, you know. It would study to show they self approve, send Timothy. So, anyhow, I wanted to bring that out because it's actually uh, very good. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless everyone within the sound of my hearing, uh, within the sound of my voice, rather, everyone that's hearing my voice, indeed. Father, that you bless them abundantly, bless them and their families, both physically, financially, spiritually, and in everything that they do, and lay their hand to it. In Jesus' name, I'm gonna say I'm gonna uh, recite this prayer, and all you need to do, because God knows your heart. There's no distance, time, or space with, you know, in Father God. So you just say Amen. If you agree, say Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I uh, I ask you to forgive me of known and unknown sin. I ask you to show me any dark spots in me so I can repent of them. Father, forgive me for not forgiving myself. Father, I ask you to help me to forgive myself and others that have hurt me. Father, of my own free will, I choose to forgive anyone that has caused me pain or injured me. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over these sins, the sins of those that have hurt me, and the sins of my ancestors. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you to apply your dunamis power to my soul wounds. And this is the power that raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Now I know that my sins are forgiven and I know my soul wounds are healed. Father, I thank you. 
I thank you. I thank you that you've heard me. I thank you hear my prayer. And I praise you, Ta Father, in Jesus' name. And the scriptures that back up my prayer is Leviticus chapter 17, Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 to 14, 3 John verses 2, and Psalms 103, 12. Father, once again, I come to you and I ask you to upload this video fast without any hiccups. I ask you to touch every hearer and write your word on the tablet of their heart. I ask you that you give them such a knowledge and such a hunger and such a thirst for you that they'll never be the same again and that their light will shine and shine and shine, starting with themselves, starting with uh, people around them. And then outwards. And in Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen.